Hello. This is my second YouTube video titled Why I Left Nigeria. Sounds a lot more dramatic than it really is, but whatever. We're gonna do things for the two. Like I said, I'm making a challenge for myself to make up for 12 years of procrastination. So <laughs> we're just gonna do loads of videos and yeah. So it's really interesting how, you know, once I clicked last month that I want to start YouTube, I was so excited. I started putting down potential topics. Like I was restless. I was restless. I just wanted to start. Then the camera arrived today. Suddenly all the excitement dissipated. I felt like, what would I talk about? I don't have any content. You know, I did my first video. I was like, oh my God, I have so much eye bags. My eyes are dripping my face i was like why is that happening like i was i've been really excited for this for a long time and now i'm faced with it and there's not so many doubts and these doubts feel real they feel like you know they have legs but because i know how excited i was like literally up until this morning i feel like my mind is just lying to me like my mind is just maybe a bit nervous or anxious and it's trying to get me to go back into that comfort zone of like no don't do nothing but that ain't gonna work i've spent some peas on this camera equipment so you must be used <laughs> you must be used um okay so why i left nigeria i left nigeria eight years ago i'm 25 now i was 26 then i just turned 25 um last week so yeah do the math i was 16 when i left nigeria and the main reason why i left nigeria was for university i went to university really young i came to the uk and started at Loughborough University where I was from 16 to 19 so I actually graduated university at the ripe old age of 19 and um, I think schooling abroad has always been something I've wanted to do even though it was out of my control it's not as if I was paying my own fees like my parents did that but it's always something that has been choking me spinning my throat i probably even wanted to school abroad from like high school level i just wanted to leave that country that nigeria if you're nigerian you might understand if you don't understand get out of my video it's japa club that is welcome here people who want to escape you know how there's like the whole escape the nine to five whole movement in london that's how like for some nigerians it's like japa the idea of like when they say someone wants to japa and someone wants to escape to a different country so a better life growing up as a kid there was really no version of my future life of my future self that i saw living in Nigeria. i just didn't really i didn't like the environment and so schooling abroad was the next best option and i think my parents really liked the uk like even when i was maybe 14 15 and you know i probably came back home one day and was like you know there's opportunities in canada as well my parents were like we don't want to hear it and a lot of times i'm going to say my parents but it might not necessarily have just been my parents it might have been maybe, maybe my dad or my mom but sometimes i just say my parents even though it's one or the other but i think this time it was my dad it was like i don't want to hear it if it's not uk you're, you're schooling in nigeria okay so i think he had this fixation on the uk i don't know why especially as i haven't been to canada i haven't been to the us but he and my mom they've been to the us and some other countries but he really likes the uk so he was like, if you're not schooling in the UK, you're schooling in Nigeria. So I actually came to the UK to study. That's what I came in for. Interestingly, it wasn't always very set. I remember the first time I actually started to verbalize to my to people around me that I was going to study abroad. It wasn't I want it, it was not I want to study abroad, it's I'm going to study abroad, which was a very bold statement to me, considering it's not as if there was a precedent for anyone in our family like studying abroad at that time. My parents did not study abroad. Yes, my dad was a banker when he was still in the workforce and he used to go for all these courses in different business schools around the world but and but that was it really and at that time my brother my older brother was around 17 finishing um secondary school and so no one had even gone to university in my family but he was at the point where that was the next stage and i remember at the time i would say oh i want to go i'm going to school abroad and he would say things like oh you're not going to school abroad you're not going to school abroad how will you school abroad when because at that time he was applying to study in nigeria and i think it was coming at university that was the perfect like first choice for him and my parents they wanted him to go to Covenant University so I remember like a lot of times it would be me him and the housekeeper in the kitchen just talking and I'd be like oh I want to school abroad and he would be like oh you're not going to school abroad like how can you school abroad when you're a girl and I'm a guy and they didn't send me abroad why would they send you abroad disclaimer you're gonna hear a lot of it but my family is quite misogynistic but again Nigeria as a whole is quite misogynistic not everyone's family is like this so i don't want people in the comments being like oh i'm nigerian but my family is misogynistic fine 
I'm just saying, Nigeria as a whole is quite misogynistic and so there's a lot of families where growing up as a girl, you can feel that you're not taken as seriously because you're a girl. And then sometimes it's even exacerbated if your family is part of a religious community that is also mad misogynistic. So that's just the context. So he was like, you're not going to school abroad. How can you go on school abroad when I'm the boy and I'm the firstborn and they're not sending me abroad? It's now you, the girl, they're going to send abroad, right? It's like, oh, they're not going to, they're not going to send you abroad. But I kept saying it and he probably doesn't remember this. This, but I think after a while of just being like yeah I'm gonna school abroad I don't care about what you're saying for me that was just blind faith I said it a few times and then I think he suddenly wanted it for himself because I remember one time um, one day we went to play tennis and my dad really loves tennis so he was probably in a good mood and after the tennis he had ordered like suya which is a kind of like grilled meat and we were all just sitting in the tennis club in Lagos and my brother just said oh daddy you promised me that if I pass my YA you were going to send me abroad my dad had probably made that promise but why well, because like GCSEs so to promise your child that if they pass their GCSEs they're going to go to university like in, a, in an advanced country or something I'm like what does that say about your faith in the person FYI my brother ended up graduating with a first class university um, degree from a British university so whatever apparently my dad had made that promise to him like if you pass your YA I'm gonna send you abroad I didn't even know about that so he brought it up to him and he said oh you said you know my dad was saying see yeah, everybody's chilling my brother goes he said if I had passed my YA you're gonna send me abroad and my dad is like yeah that's true well how, how does that happen like how does one school abroad and they said that's something about my dad if he promises you something he's gonna do it he doesn't play with promises he's not like my mom but my dad he doesn't play with promises he doesn't make them very often but when he makes them he and you actually remind him and say you promised this he will actually do it so it started and um, at that time they were still waiting for the decision to come in from Covenant University and the decision hadn't come in and they were chasing up chasing up because that's a school they wanted from my brother and they weren't hearing anything back from the university first batch second batch third batch whatever so they were searching for six form schools in Nigeria since my brother had brought up the idea of schooling abroad and then he then started at Bridge House College in Ukoi and I think about two weeks or so after he started at Bridge House his name actually came out in the next admission batch for Covenant but at that point it was already too late because you know my family and him and everyone they had them bought into the idea of oh their child is going to then school abroad and they had already paid the fees for the first time in Bridge House College so there was no point he then went on to finish his sixth form in Bridge House and then he went to the University of Essex did accounting and finance got a first class blah 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 great stuff but I'm just trying to tell you the foundations of me traveling outside Nigeria. So it's not as if before me and my senior brother who's three years older than me there was like a precedent of schooling abroad. It was just I believe I was a huge catalyst to him going abroad and I believe him going abroad was a huge catalyst to me going abroad if that makes sense because I always think this to myself I feel like if I wasn't just like mouthing off about how I was really going to study abroad he might not have even remembered my dad's promise or he might not even have felt like oh let me study abroad he might not have dreamt that big and then he wouldn't have studied abroad and if he hadn't studied abroad the chances of me then being sent abroad not because I was a girl but because you know the precedent had been set of you know going to Covenant or something that might be where I that might be where I would have headed that's correct English but you get the point so in my mind you might ask him he'll give you a different story but in my mind I was very loud around that period because again we were talking about universities a lot because we were waiting for admissions list to come out for him and so the topic around the house a lot of the time was universities and I kept saying I'm going to study abroad I'm going to study abroad and he was like you're not going to study abroad blah 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 you're a girl you're this you're that and then he ended up studying abroad and they just my parents kind of wanted to continue the whole thing and I ended up coming here for university and that was from the ages of 16 to 19 so the first major reason that I left Nigeria was for education the reason why I stayed out of Nigeria was because I actually never intended to come back I've never been a fan of that country. I mean, is that a bad thing to say? I feel like I'm extremely aware of everything that's going wrong in that country. And it's just very scary. The UK is peaceful and quiet. Nigeria is loud and chaotic. This means that if you're someone who wants to be in a loud, rowdy, intense environment, you're gonna hate the UK. You're gonna love Lagos, Nigeria, right? But if you like peace and order and kind of like serenity and muteness, you're gonna actually like the UK. So it depends on the kind of human being you are. And I've liked the UK. And it's not just the UK. I'm pretty sure there are other countries I would love as well, but I 
found Nigeria very chaotic so another reason why I just wanted to stay abroad was that I like being by myself I don't know if that's weird but I love being alone I love solitude and I've basically been that way since coming here eight years ago I've just always been on my own yes I go to I used to go to school now I work but just to come home and like sit in the quiet of your house and do your own shit and I think that sounds really hermetic or something but to just like not talk to anyone and just do your shit and be alone i love being alone i love it and i felt like i wasn't gonna have that in nigeria because i don't really trust living in lagos on my own like it's a pretty dangerous city i think so if i had gone back to nigeria i would have just lived with my family and it wouldn't be the same solitude because it's a whole household at any given point in time four to five people so i wouldn't get i wouldn't get that basically so that's another reason why i love being here third reason will be bad news so much bad news in nigeria like you know nigeria lagos nigeria and when i say nigeria by the way know that i only lived in lagos and so i'm probably interchanging the both and it's it probably what a lot of things i say probably doesn't even apply to any place outside lagos but it is the most popular city in nigeria so i'm just gonna say nigeria all the time but i actually mean lagos nigeria if you're living in lagos you know you're gonna hear about like some super like ritual killing on you know the on monday on tuesday you're gonna hear that a truck fell on top of a car and crushed a family on tuesday you know on wednesday you're gonna hear about some kind of like gang rape on Thursday, you're gonna hear about some toxic work environment, you know, bosses being mean, being very violating towards their staff. On Friday, somebody who is not supposed to die or has died, maybe from an armed robbery or from a totally avoidable health condition or health situation or medical practices. On Saturday, this, on Sunday, this. Like, I just feel like anytime I'm, I'm in Nigeria, it is bad news upon bad news upon bad news. Why? It's so much. I'm gonna check something real quick because I'm in my laptop here and I'm gonna put in average life expectancy Nigeria and let's just say I don't know what year okay so the current life expectancy for Nigeria in 2022 is 55.44 years so 55 years um by the way that really scares me because both of my parents are above 55 so it makes you feel like oh my god average life expectancy as at 2022 in Nigeria is 55 whereas in the UK it's 81.65 so 82 too. so like it's a big difference living in nigeria statistically you can get up to like 55 and then that's it whereas here you can expect to get up until your 80s and then that's it obviously that's not how life works and people die 10 20 30 45 it doesn't matter but i was very cognizant of that disparity in life expectancy between in developing countries and developed countries and so for me i was like i'm out of here I'm out of here, I'm out of here. Take me out. Yeah, so, and I think finally the weather. I actually prefer the weather here than the weather in Nigeria. Now, it's not like chill. So for example, in the UK, most times it's cold. And in Nigeria, all the time it's really hot. So it's not as if, you know, here is quite mild they're both almost extremes of each other but i actually prefer this especially because yeah outside it's cold but once you go inside it's warm and it's a nice weather temperature and when you go out you can actually wrap up whereas in nigeria it's hot inside the house if you are lucky enough to be rich enough to have like a power generator because you can't trust the national um, electricity bullshit but if you're lucky enough to even have a power generator then it's okay but if you don't then it's hot inside the house and it is hotter outside the house and a lot of people like it's not like um america where you can just maybe wear a crop top and wear like really short shorts and walk around it's still very conservative so you know if you're wearing a jumper inside the house you're still going to wear a jumper outside the house even if it's like 35 degrees i don't like that i don't want that Plus it's terrible for the skin. Like I remember growing up in Nigeria and we would come to the UK for holiday for two weeks. And then just traveling back, everyone would see how smoother and nice our skin was because we were under the harsh sun, sun all the time. And so taking a break from that and going to a cool environment for just two weeks would do amazing things. So those are the main reasons why I left Nigeria really. Number one was school, which is not even my of my doing. Yes, it was my desire, but my parents, by the way, have got helped me fulfill that desire. And then number two was I love being alone so that's part of the reason why i struggled to stay in the uk i love being able to do my own thing and think my thoughts and sit in silence number three bad news crime accidents so much in that country god forbid even going back to nigeria nowadays let's say i go to visit my family or anything i'm usually counting down the amount of days i have to stay there for like if i land and i'm going to be there for a month give it one week 
my calendar is out and I'm taking the days as they go by. It is so scary. Because you hear bad news every day, you start to wonder, will it be me one day? Like there's even people who don't live in Nigeria, they travel back home and then boom, they just die from some stupid thing. Either they were collateral damage in someone else's ridiculous driving or a victim of a crime or they fell sick and they couldn't get treatment. It's so bad. And so accidents bad news crime that was another reason and then the fourth reason whether but it wasn't that deep personally i love it here in the uk hopefully in the future i'll travel to other countries as well but yeah that's those are the reasons why i left nigeria and if let's say you are someone who you let's say you're studying in the uk or studying in any of these advanced countries i'm saying advanced in quotes like they're not advanced but economically they are so and you're studying in any of these countries and you want to actually get tips on how to get a job there after graduation subscribe to this channel because it will be one of the videos i will do very very shortly thanks for watching my second vlog um 